Hi, everyone. Uh, really quickly, brief introduction. Um, my name is Anton Venema. I'm the CTO at Frozen Mountain. Uh, we've been building real-time client and server products since uh, about 2008. Um, our focus is on developers and empowering developers, um, and particularly with regards to WebRTC and real-time communication and extensibility. Uh, my role is uh, the CTO and uh, lead product designer. So, does anyone remember Smarter Child? One, two, getting too old here. Um, Smarter Child was back in the days of AOL Instant Messenger. It was a bot, one of the first uh, bots that you could converse with outside of IRC. Um, and people could, you can talk to it, it'll talk back to you, and it would say interesting things. Um, okay, good. Thank people you. like to push the limits on what you can get AI to say. That became pretty clear. Uh, you could get Smarter Child to say all sorts of things if you really wanted to. Maybe more recent would be Tay AI. Does anybody remember Tay? AI, the Microsoft experiment that went really wrong. So it started out quite innocent. Um, she was very friendly. She progressively got weirder. As people fed it more information, it kind of took a bit of a turn until finally Microsoft had to cut it off. It was getting out of hand. Don't want to get political here. So autonomous bots have been around for a long time. Um, they do lots of different things. They can do lots of different things. The big key factor here is that they're actively engaged in the conference with people. Um, they're consuming information and they're producing output. They're generally a black box. Um, and hopefully, they're improving or adding value to the conversation. And if you design it around cloud services that are widely available right now, your bots improve as AI technology improves. So we're going to start out with kind of a basic peer to, not peer to peer, but peer to SFU uh, scenario here, where one client's talking to another client uh, through a forwarding service. You don't need an SFU for this case, but it helps my point in a minute here, so bear with me. So in this case, we have Opus, RTP traffic, trans, uh, going up to the SFU, being forwarded to the other client, 48 kilohertz stereo. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a bot into the mix. And the bot is gonna consume that feed, feed it <coughs> off to a speech to text service, get the text back, feed that back up to the SFU, and then push it out to the clients. That's a basic transcription bot, right? We're, we're listening, we're just doing speech to text, and we're doing it remotely, so you don't have to do it uh, on the clients. Then what we want to do is take it to the next level. We want to take that uh, text transcription, and we want to translate it. So say we have two clients, uh, they speak different languages, English and French. We can feed it off to a translation service. The transcriptions can be kind of crossed over, uh, fed back into the conference, and then delivered uh, as text into the feed. All right, the final tier, voice translation. I will note that when you stack all these things together, any problem in any tier kind of gets amplified as you go along. So hopefully your translation's good, and then the text-to-speech service will take that audio, or sorry, take that text, and generate uh, PCM audio that you can then encode to Opus, of course, because we're good people. We send it to the SFU, and then that goes out uh, to the clients, respectively. So what we're gonna try to do today, and hopefully it will work well, is do a live demo of this exact scenario. Um, we're gonna be using Chrome, as our web clients. We're gonna be using the Google uh, Speech API to give us text out of our speech, Google Translate to convert <coughs> it into text, and then Microsoft Speech Synthesis to convert that into uh, synthesized audio, which sounds amazing. And my brother and co-founder, actually, of the company is in the back. He's gonna be our English representative today. And we are going to start up this bot. So the server is actually we're just trying to mix all the technologies together. We've got Google, we've got Microsoft. Um, our servers are actually on the Oracle Cloud infrastructure, so we just like to spread ourselves all over the place. So let's start with uh, just text-to-speech. So I can say, bonjour, Jared. I should probably mute myself. And if all goes well, we have text. And it's Hi, Anton. How's it going? Hi. All right, hang on a second here. Let's 
restart this with translation and speech to text. That's the interesting one. There we go. So everything that I uh, type in here is going to get translated. I can say, um, bonjour, Jared. It gets translated and transcribed. I can say, hola, Jared. And Jared, if you can say something back to us in English. Hey, Anton, how are you doing? <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> One sec. Hopefully nobody here speaks these languages. <clears throat> okay, go ahead, Jared. Hey, Anton, how are you? <laughs> Hands on, come on, allez-vous. So we've got here, this is our bot. So we're picking up the, um, the speech, uh, translating it into various languages. And do we have audio? Let's try this again. I'm going to kill this. Speech, stream, recognize. OK, go ahead, Jared. Live translation is good, but has a ways to go yet. That's pretty good, actually. That's probably our best all day. And we'll end there. So um, this is all using uh, not free, but very inexpensive cloud services. Uh, Google Speech API is doing the uh, speech to text. Works really well with English. Um, our experience has been kind of subpar with other languages. Um, that could very well be that we're just we just haven't configured it correctly. So I don't want to blame anybody, but English is definitely working better for us. Streaming requests are currently limited to 60 seconds. So if you're building with the Google Speech API and you're streaming data to the server, after 60 seconds you're dead. You got to start a new one. Um, it's very sensitive to network activity. Um, it expects you to be right on time with every packet. So the more latency you have on the network, the worse it gets. Um, costs money. Can't blame them. Uh, 500 requests per 100 seconds, rate limit. Um, this is the major gotcha. You have to use lossless audio. Uh, if you don't use lossless audio, if you try to send PCMU or PCMA, it works, but it does not really. And this is the major uh, issue I think that we would like to see solved in the coming years is that you have to pause your speech uh, before it transcribes um, for good reason. Uh, not all languages are mapped one to one. So you wait. <laughs> and then batteries die. Uh, wait for you to pause. And then it kind of organizes the words together and gives you a result. Uh, Microsoft Speech Synthesis. So we chose to use this because it was a little different. It's not a cloud service. That's a pro, that's a con, depends on who you are and what you're doing. Um, installation was really, really odd. Um, and you had to copy registry keys around to get it to recognize the voices. Um, and it requires lots and lots of language packs if you want to be really broad with your support. And they're all quite large. Um, it sounds very synthesized. It requires a bit of work to get the data into a binary feed that can be fed into the network. Um, Google Translate, there's not much to say here. This is a, we've had no issues with the Translate API. It's text in, text out. I would say the only gotcha is the number of characters per day if you're running a big scale service. There are lots of other options. So if one of these isn't working for you, um, there are third parties, uh, some of the heavyweights like IBM, Watson, and Microsoft have um, equivalent services. I have not tried them, I can't vouch for them, but they're there and they show up in a Google search result. That's it. Thank you, everyone.